Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru, and today I'll be taking a look at a newly released mouse from Corsair, the Iron Claw RGB. So comfort and ergonomics always come heavily into play with mice, and this is especially the case in gaming. Most users who upgrade from a standard kind of included with your PC mouse uh, will initially look to preference of grip and size, uh, claw fingertips and palm grips. If you're looking to get really technical, uh, you can even look to a modular or customizable mouse uh, with interchangeable grips, uh, palm or pinky rests as well. If you're not looking to spend loads of time and money fine tuning your grip, a safe option for a user with larger hands, say, would be a palm grip mouse. And this is exactly the target market for the Iron Claw. So let's start with the price. At £54.99, it sits pretty mid-tier when compared to the competition. Uh, not crazy expensive, not really a budget option either. Uh, but on paper, you do seem to get quite a bit for your money. Firstly, it's compatible with Corsair's IQ software, uh, which in my opinion is great. Every experience I've had with IQ has been really positive, and if the level of customization is the same as some previously tested coolers and keyboards, uh, this is definitely a big plus. You do also get some RGB configurable lighting in two zones, uh, one at the rear of the mouse and one by the scroll wheel. Corsair have also included Omron switches, nice and quality, and also boasts the Iron Claw mouse features their most advanced optical sensor yet. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how the mouse actually performs. Packaging follows Corsair's yellow aesthetic, and opening the box up, we find the mouse itself, as well as a quick start guide and warranty information. With the Iron Claw in hand, what's instantly impressive is that it feels quite light for a larger mouse. At 105 grams, Corsair have done well to keep the weight down, and although predominantly plastic in construction, the Iron Claw doesn't feel creaky or cheap. A quick squeeze shows no signs of flexing, and a shake, no signs of rattling. It does feel really good in a palm grip. The top of the mouse, including right and left clicks, is made from a soft touch plastic, and both sides feature rubberized grips. Perfect if you tend to lift your mouse up a lot. In terms of comfort, I don't have massive hands, but the Iron Claw was a particularly good fit for me. My hand sat really naturally over the mouse, and the extended thumb rest helped with positioning my thumb close to both the side buttons. Both right and left clicks are also slightly concave, uh, which isn't really noticeable by looking directly at the mouse, uh, but it does help with centering your fingers over both the right and left clicks. You have seven buttons in total on the Iron Claw, both left and right clicks, side buttons, uh, DPI switches, and the wheel click, all programmable through the IQ software. The scroll wheel is a little bit larger than most mice I've used in the past, and initially it did feel a little bit woolly. Uh, it's a little hard to detect individual clicks up and down, and it will be interesting to see how this affects its gaming experience. It's pretty easy to scroll quickly though, uh, so possibly better for moving through long pages of text. As mentioned, the right and left clicks are Omron switches, rated for up to 50 million clicks, uh, with operating force of 60 gram force and a 0.45 actuation distance. And these feel, by comparison, very clicky and very responsive. Taking a look at the base of the mouse, we find a number of large skatey feet and the optical sensor. Specifically, it's a PMW3391, which has been developed in conjunction with PixArt. You can also get quite specific with DPI adjustments, uh, from 100 up to a native 18,000 with single DPI steps. The cable is braided as well, also nice to see, and 1.8 meters long. There's also a small Velcro strap to help with tidying the cable up and for travel. And travel is also an interesting one for the Iron Claw, as it features onboard profile storage for up to three profiles. Great if you do find yourself on the move a lot, as you don't have to spend time downloading software and spending time configuring everything over and over again. It's pretty much just plug and play. This does mean that the DPI buttons and DPI, DPI indicator LEDs are essentially uh, multi-purpose. Out the box, the front button controls profile select and the rear button DPI adjustment. The LED indicators also react depending on which button you press to indicate both DPI levels and which profile is selected. Plugging the mouse in kicks the lighting into gear. The illuminated Corsair logo and scroll wheel lights do look pretty good, although maybe a little bit dim in a bright lit room. With the lights off though, colours do come through much brighter. Setting the mouse up does require heading over to Corsair.com to download the IQ software. Uh, once installed, you can double check to see if newer firmware is needed to be installed, uh, but otherwise you're good to start customising to your heart's content. 
As mentioned, it's super pleasing to see that the Iron Claw is supported by IQ, as there is so much that you can change and customise. For the first Profiles tab, you can of course set up profiles that are stored on your system, and there are three options to be stored on the mouse. You can link these programs to applications so that they are enabled automatically as well. Setting up one of these profiles uh, just requires the Profiles tab to be selected, uh, and then you can move through the other tabs. Lighting for the Iron Claw can be set up on both the scroll and logo zones independently, and you do have a ton of effects to choose from, uh, such as rainbow, pulsing, static, even temperature modes are all available and all lighting can also be synchronised with other Corsair components and peripherals. DPI options are just as extensive, with incremental increases and decreases of one DPI up and down. It's cool as well to see options for lower sniper DPI options, and that both sniper and DPI indicator colours can be changed to basically any colour you want. For performance, you have options to enable angle snapping and enhance pointer precision, and probably one of the more interesting features, uh, surface calibration, designed to tune the Iron Claw mouse to whichever gaming surface you prefer. Corsair do state that this isn't necessary for their own mouse mats, uh, as the Iron Claw will be pre-calibrated, uh, but for non-Corsair mouse pads, the process only takes a few seconds, uh, definitely worth it for peace of mind. There is probably a lot more customization than I can cover in this review, uh, more synchronization with other Corsair peripherals, uh, for example, and more lighting effects. The inclusion of IQ is definitely a big feather in the Iron Claw's cap though. In terms of actual performance though, it's best to take the Iron Claw through a number of games. It was put through its paces with games like PUBG and Superhot, and I didn't encounter any issues with tracking. The collaboration with Pixart on the center, sensor uh, seems to be a good move on Corsair's part. I actually found it to be a really comfortable mouse during longer gaming sessions, uh, thanks to the palm grip, even though I have been using some smaller mice recently. The buttons are well laid out and spaced out, and I couldn't see there being a huge issue with reaching controls even for varied hand sizes. As I mentioned, I don't have massive hands, uh, but it still felt like a really good fit for me. With the scroll wheel, the single clicks up and down were a little bit hard to discern. After extended use, I was able to train myself to switch between, say, uh, weapons in a game more effectively, uh, but I did find in a number of instances I'd over or under scroll. I've recently been using the Logitech MX Master, which features a super accurate and tactile scroll wheel, uh, so it's possible I'm being a little bit picky in this respect. One issue I did come across though which proved a little bit irritating uh, came when lifting the mouse to recenter it on the mouse pad. I tend to prefer to use a higher DPI and don't really swing my hand around madly, uh, but when lifting the mouse slightly and moving it to the right, I did find that the thumb support sometimes caught and dragged across my mouse pad. This was more irritating as it felt and sounded a little bit grating, but I could see this potentially damaging softer mouse pads down the line uh, and after much longer periods of use. It also kind of begs the question why this space at the bottom of the mouse wasn't simply filled in. I can't imagine that this would have added much to the weight of the mouse either. Overall though, I was left impressed by the Iron Claw RGB. I found performance to be perfectly acceptable, and it's still really good to see that the priority focus has been the great sensor and the Omron switches. There is a ton of flexibility for setting the mouse up to your gaming preferences, and the three profile onboard storage is also really cool to see and means you can configure the Iron Claw, say, for your three favourite games and basically just forget about it. The central scroll wheel did take a little bit of time to get used to, and although a little soft to begin with, I did find it improved with time. The Iron Claw RGB isn't covered in lighting, but there is enough to match your setup. Um, it's a little bit dim and could be brighter, but in dimly lit rooms or with the lights turned down a bit, it does shine through well enough and does the job. The one core thing to me though was the shape and comfort. I did find it fit my hand really, really well. The side grips are nice and grippy and the button layout and position is spot on in my opinion. For me, it's probably one of the most comfortable mouse shapes I have tested to date. And at 105 grams, it's also impressively light and again, sort of my perfect weight preference. At £54.99, I think it's actually really well priced as you do get a bunch of really useful features basically ticking every box on my, say, core request checklist. You don't get things like interchangeable weights and modular buttons, uh, but this kind of, kind of customization would likely have driven the price up quite a bit, essentially for those who prefer a palm grip or those with larger hands looking for a new mouse with a sensible feature set that's not too over the top, you could do a lot worse than the Corsair Iron Claw RGB. 
But please, let us know in the comments what you think. Are there any features or uh, functions that you feel are essential or might be missing from the Iron Claw RGB? Uh, we are always interested to hear your thoughts. If this is your first time on the Kit Guru Tech channel, uh, welcome and please give us some feedback with a like or a dislike. Also feel free to hit the subscribe and bell icons below uh, for notifications of new video uploads on the Kit Guru Tech channel. I've been Silas from Kit Guru and I will see you in the next one.